For me, uh, when I think about the, the practices of highly proficient digital governments, I would put it into three big buckets. So those buckets are being agile, being user-centric, and being open. So some of the things that have come out of the BC government that I'm very proud of are commitments to, to user centricity in how we build digital services. So one thing that we, that we run is the BC Developers Exchange, or our Exchange Lab. It's in downtown Victoria, and it's a phenomenal space. We have up to 12 teams from the ministries that are working in there at any time, and they show up with a clearly defined business problem. We mentor them, we support them through the physical space, and we use resources from the ministry to procure a technology team that comes and is completely embedded with those public servants. So one of those areas in government that is a bit new and, um, and is a change or an area of change in government is the way that we do communications. Um, and so like some of the, the new techniques and methods and, and tools that you know are coming into government through um, digital transformation, um, it provides an opportunity to uh, also push some of those um, edges for communications as well. And so um, there's been a chance and an opportunity to bring together folks in government who are um, trying to do new things in storytelling and um, trying to use new, new ways of communicating with the public and with each other. Um, yeah, and so we've, we've put together a community practice for storytelling in the government. Um, and there's an opportunity you know, to meet with people who work in different government departments and are doing this kind of work and, and start to talk about some best practices. For me, it's always about speaking the language of the, of the individual that you're that you're working with. So, in in the upfront process, it's a lot of what can what's within your scope of possibility, and then we can kind of negotiate that together. So it's not often that they're invited to design charrettes. It's more so about okay, I have this idea of, for example, having a harm reduction program from a culturally indigenous perspective. What does that look like? for you, Community Health Center? What does that look like for you, Indigenous Serving Organization? What does that look like for you, Toronto Public Health? And I can tell you what it looks like for me from a social services point of view. And then we collaborate and use very often traditional government tools like term sheets uh, and project plans, but, but truly the product is um, more collaborative than any other, perhaps other government intervention. Uh, yeah, there's, there's so many roadblocks. There's. Um... There's the roadblock of trying to deliver things in kind of short in a short period of time. There's roadblocks to being able to go out and do this research and actually talk to the people that these benefits serve. Um, there's challenges in uh, in being able to use new tools and infrastructure. Uh, there's tools around uh, making uh, things like consent forms plain language while like still pleasing the lawyers everywhere. Um, yeah, there's just so many of them and. Uh, I think a big part of what we try to do um, when trying to clear these roadblocks is that we try to tell the story of why we're doing it and like what the mission is. And that is like, there are many tools to do this, but, but being able to tell the story is one of the biggest uh, tools to clearing those roadblocks.